Now, are you familiar with what a processor does? A processor computes or processes all the data a computer needs to do its thing. Different computer programs tell the processor how they'd like the data processed. Add this to that. Delete this, etc., so that they get the results they need. Show this screen, send this email, and so on. Now, when you're picking out a computer, it helps to look at a processor based on how much you need it to do, or in computer talk, how much data you need it to process at one time. Think of it sort of like a car engine. The bigger the engine, the faster the car. Likewise, the bigger the processor, the faster the computer. And bigger programs need bigger, faster processors to run them. I can get a bit more technical about how to compare processors. There's three parts of a processor you need to be aware of: the bits, the number of cores, and the speed. First, bits are pretty straightforward. Most laptops have 32-bit processors, but the newest sports 64-bit processors. Basically, that's like turning your V6 engine into a V12. Lots of extra power for heavy-duty computer work. Second, cores run along similar lines. Once upon a time, all processors had one core, but today's new processors can have two, four, or more cores. It's sort of like your car having two, four, or more engines in one. The more cores a processor has, the more data the processor can process simultaneously. Third, processor speed is measured in gigahertz, indicated by GHz. The higher the number of gigahertz, the faster the processor can process data. When comparing processors, make sure you're looking at processors with the same number of bits and cores. Otherwise, it gets really complicated. And well, I'd ask a knowledgeable person for help at that point. Next up, let's take a look at RAM. Along with the processor, RAM is the other key factor in how much and how fast your computer does what you ask it to do. The programs and other data the processor needs to work with are kept in storage on your laptop. But to use them, the data has to be taken out of storage and made available to the processor, and that's what RAM does. RAM is the workforce that takes it out and hands it off to the processor. The larger workforce you have, the more work you can do at once, and the faster that work gets done. Same thing with RAM. The more the RAM you have, the more programs you can use at once, and the faster they run. And in case you didn't know, RAM is measured in gigabytes, designated by GB. The higher the number, the more RAM you have. Okay, let's talk about storage, also known as the hard drive. The hard drive is basically the storage closet of a computer. It's where all your files and programs are kept until you need them. Like with RAM, storage is measured in gigabytes, designated by GB. And the more gigabytes, the larger the storage closet. You want to make sure you get a large enough hard drive to hold all the files and programs you'll keep on your laptop. Things like photos, music, movies, and games can take up space pretty quickly if you're not prepared. We're up to video cards, also called graphics cards. Video cards figure out how to display all the visual data on the screen. Really, a video card's job is a lot like an artist painting on a canvas. Just an artist who paints very, very fast, and on your monitor. Video cards come in two flavors: shared and dedicated. Shared is just that. It shares the main processor, so there isn't as much processing power around for your graphics. A dedicated card has, you guessed it, a dedicated processor just to handle the graphics, which is better and important for really demanding visuals like 3D games. Dedicated cards are measured in megabytes or gigabytes, and more is generally better. This is sometimes referred to as video RAM or VRAM. Next, one of the most important things about laptops: portability. Portability is really a combination of several things. Size, weight, and battery life. Smaller laptops are lighter and easier to carry around, generally, which makes sense. They also tend to use less power. The biggest drain on a laptop battery is often the screen. Less screen, longer battery. Again, generally. As your laptop gets bigger and usually heavier, it's going to start sucking up power, like an anteater sucks up defenseless ants. <laughs> You have to keep in mind, though, that sometimes smaller can be more expensive, especially if you're looking for really powerful small computers. So, bottom line: when you think about size, weight, and battery life, you're probably going to have to make some trade-offs. Just remember to spend time thinking about how portable you need your laptop before buying. Now, the last thing to consider: the great unifier, the OS or operating system. If your computer were a little factory, the operating system would be the guy in charge. 
You tell him what you want, and he gets the factory to produce it. So just like in real life, where a great manager is easy to work with and can get a factory to do more with better and faster results, a great OS is easy to use and gets your computer to do more with better and faster results. Without an OS, your computer is a really expensive paperweight. Okay, you've just completed Laptop 101. Now you're all up to speed on basic laptop comprehension. Congratulations! Mai mult decât un expert, un prieten.